cluster sampling is a statistical method used to select a representative group from a larger population by dividing the population into smaller groups or clusters and then randomly selecting some of these clusters for study. Instead of sampling individuals directly, researchers focus on entire groups, which makes data collection more efficient. Cluster sampling is often used when studying large populations that are spread out geographically, as it reduces time and costs associated with data collection. This method is useful in various fields, including social sciences, education, and healthcare research. Now let's explore some key characteristics of cluster sampling. One characteristic of cluster sampling is that it divides the population into naturally occurring groups, such as schools, neighbourhoods or companies. Another characteristic is that it can be performed in multiple stages, where researchers first select clusters and then choose individuals within those clusters for further study. Cluster sampling is also different from stratified sampling, as it selects entire groups rather than individuals from different categories. Additionally, it is useful when a full list of individuals in the population is not available, making it a practical method for large-scale research. Now let's look at some examples of cluster sampling in practice. One example of cluster sampling is in educational research, where a study on student performance might randomly select entire schools instead of choosing individual students from across different schools. Another example is in healthcare studies where researchers may select certain hospitals or clinics to analyse patient data instead of gathering information from all medical facilities in a region. In political surveys, cluster sampling can be used by selecting specific cities or districts instead of polling individuals across the entire country. These examples show how cluster sampling helps researchers collect data more efficiently. Now let's examine some strengths of this method. One strength of cluster sampling is that it is cost-effective and time-efficient, as researchers only need to survey selected clusters rather than an entire population. It also simplifies data collection, especially when dealing with large and geographically dispersed groups. Another advantage is that cluster sampling can be useful when a complete list of individuals in a population is unavailable, making it more practical for large-scale studies. Additionally, when clusters are chosen randomly, the method can provide reasonably accurate estimates of the overall population. Now let's consider some weaknesses of cluster sampling. One weakness of cluster sampling is that it can introduce sampling bias if the selected clusters are not truly representative of the entire population. Since clusters often have similarities within them, the results may not fully capture the diversity of the larger group. Another issue is that the method can lead to higher variability in results compared to other sampling techniques, which may reduce accuracy. Additionally, researchers must carefully define clusters to avoid errors in study design, as poorly chosen clusters can lead to misleading conclusions. Despite these challenges, alternative methods can be used when cluster sampling is not suitable. Now, let's explore one such alternative. An alternative to cluster sampling is stratified sampling, where the population is divided into distinct groups, or strata, based on specific characteristics such as age, income, or education level. Unlike cluster sampling, which selects entire groups, stratified sampling ensures that individuals from each category are included, leading to a more representative sample. This method reduces variability and improves accuracy especially when population differences need to be considered. While stratified sampling requires more detailed population data, it provides better precision and is useful when studying specific subgroups within a population.